Good morning, Abundant Life Church. Good morning. It's great to see everybody. Welcome, welcome. Amen. On this cold morning. <laughs> that's okay, because we got a we got a warm word that's gonna warm it right on up. Amen. 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 Power of the word. Amen. But really, it's great to see everybody this morning and uh, welcome to those who are watching by way of the internet. Welcome to you. Thank you for joining us this morning. We have a powerful word coming at you. I mean, just a fantastic uh, word. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. 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 We get to uh, lift up the name of the Lord in song and praise. We know it's such a privilege and an honor to do so. He's given us the breath to do so, so we're going to honor him. Amen. By returning it, returning to him what he's given us in song, praise, and worship. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And I'd like to call your attention to the toll-free number at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you need prayer, please call that number. There's uh, somebody who will pray with you, who will pray for you. Amen. Amen. Don't wait. If you need to call, please, please call. Amen. Uh, this morning we're going to read Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I would do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, 19. Amen. I search the world.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Disappointment is Sunday's empty tomb. Since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime. Resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. 
he says, live, 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 live. God bones hear the word of the Lord. Live, 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 live. God bones hear the word of the Lord.
Come on, ladies, let's sing this to the Lord. Come on. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, hide in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord for just a moment, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Amen. I said he's a way maker. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 When there seems to be no other way. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we lift you up today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Press in today. I, I just don't feel that I, I we, we can't move forward at this moment. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just I just feel so strongly today that there's someone here that needs a miracle. Hallelujah. That, that's what just keeps coming to me. You gotta have a miracle. He's the way maker. Amen. If you need that miracle, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is who you are.
you know, set the timer, and uh, let me see if I can, I can pick this lock, and so he goes down there, and, and uh, he tries, after they lock him in there, and he tries for an uh, amount of time, and then uh, the time expires, and uh, he was unable to pick the lock, and um, the, 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 what, what happened was, is that they never locked the door in the first place, so all he had to do was just push on the door, to let itself out. And I felt, I heard the Lord say that this is a year of open doors, but you might just have to push the door open. It's unlocked. You just Amen. need to push it on Amen. open Hallelujah. and walk through some things. Sometimes we get to a place where we see a door in front of us or, or some obstacle and we give up before we ever get to the door because we see it as an obstacle. And God's saying, I've already taken care of it. Yes. Just go ahead and push your way yes. through and go ahead and walk in on the other side because what's on this side, you can see everything that's in here, but what's waiting is on the other side of the door of what you don't see. And that's where God is trying to get us to. So just begin to uh, just begin to just start pushing in places. I'm telling you, you're going to find that there's open doors all around. Amen. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Yeah. You may be seated this morning in the house of the Lord. It's so glad to be here this morning on this brisk, cold. I know I've looked around, there's a few people that always say they like the cold weather, but they're not here today. I don't like it, but I'm here. Amen. Amen. I bet all the cold weather people are wishing for some of them 180 degree weather like I am. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good to be here today and uh, be in the house of the Lord. We're so glad to have everybody here today. Uh, we want to say uh, Therese and Matthew have some guests with them today, Val, Jerome, and Javon, and Al. We're so glad to have them here with us today. Amen. Amen. So glad to have all of our first-time guests with us today. Uh, we're so honored to have you here. Uh, we have a few quick announcements, and then we're going to get into the Word of the Lord today. Uh, uh, we have on... 
June, uh, January the 21st uh, will be our first annual, oh, I'm sorry, our annual fast, I'm sorry, will conclude on the 21st of this month. Uh, so we want to say thank you to everybody who's been participating, those that have been uh, praying and seeking the Lord during this time. I know uh, that you, God, is speaking to you during this time as he has many of us. And uh, we're just lifting those things up to the Lord. And so uh, thank you for uh, continuing to honor uh, the, the first year fruits of, of, of fasting. Amen. Uh, don't forget our Wednesday evening services at 630 will be prayer. And our services will be at 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday night, uh, men and women's Bible study begins on January the 24th at 7 p.m. in our fellowship hall. Uh, there'll be food that'll be provided, and I believe we have three video clips uh, to show you on what the uh, Wednesday night men and ladies Bible study is going to be about. When I told a friend I was writing a Bible study on the book of Amos, she asked, why in the world would you write a Bible study on the book of Amos? And my friend, that's why. I'm Jennifer Rothschild, and I'm inviting you to join me for Amos. It's an invitation to the good life. On the surface, we think Amos is just full of condemnations, but we are gonna turn every condemnation into an invitation. In this eight session Bible study, we are going to receive God's invitation to seek God and live. Because when we seek God, we live the God life and the God life is the good life. You're invited to live assured and chosen and faithful. You're invited to live humble and justly and prayerful and never without hope. So open this invitation to the good life and let's experience it together. You know, in some ways, prayer is like a long stretch of road. It serves a purpose in getting us from point A to point B. However, at first glance, prayer, just like this road, can also seem uninteresting and unrewarding. We have a hard time seeing where it will take us and why it's worth it. What is it about prayer that makes us feel this way? I invite you to join with me in this video Bible study as we explore the very heart of biblical prayer. In these four sessions, I want to show you a simple prayer that you can use every day to have a heartfelt conversation with your Father in Heaven. I want to help you see that you can approach God with confidence, even if at times you feel like a prayer wimp. You see, prayer is not a privilege for the pious or the art of a chosen few. Prayer is simply a heartfelt conversation between God and His children. We speak, He listens. He speaks, we listen. God changes people through such moments. So take that first step, set out on the journey, and let the conversation begin. Pastor has the books for men, so if you need a book for that, uh, you can see Brother Davis, and uh, he'll be happy to give you the uh, give you a book and, and uh, uh, get you set up there. And then also for the ladies, uh, you can order the book on Amazon, and uh, I think it's called Amos. Is that mm -hmm. Amos? And then you can catch that on Amazon. Amen. So that's going to be for our Wednesday night Bible study that is starting yeah. on uh, the twenty. First, no, 24th, sorry, 24th at 7 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Amen. If you'll stand for just a moment, we're going to, uh, we're going to do our uh, healing declaration and tithe and offering, then we're going to get into the word of the Lord today. Amen.
If you'll direct your attention to the screen today and repeat with me. I declare by the stripes of Jesus that I'm healed. He took my sickness. He carried my pain. I believe it is the will of God for me to be healed. In the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and premature death off my body. I declare that none of these things exist in my heavenly Father. I declare in the name of Jesus that every sickness, hidden disease, infections, or pain in my body was paid for at the cross, and I am healed today. Amen, amen, amen. In and as we uh, want to remind everybody to continue to pray for those that are on our prayer list, there is a prayer list that's out in the foyer out there. You can stop by, maybe pick one of them up when you're in your prayer closet. You can just pray over all of those names that are there. We're believing God for healing for each and every one that is on that prayer list. Amen? Amen. All right, if you'll direct your attention to our screen for our tithe and offering declaration. Oh, God, today we believe you for an open heaven, unlocked storehouses, miracles, visitations, and divine manifestations. We join our faith and trust in your word by returning the tithe and sowing seed offerings into your kingdom. By doing so, we know that you have rebuked the devourer in our lives, rain down on us, and water our seed in favor, blessings, and increase in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can bring your tithe and offering at this time. God bless Pastor Davis. Thank you, Pastor God. Blessings to all of you today, and what a joy it is to be in the presence of the Lord, even on cold, cold days like today. Uh, they say it and only happens in Texas. I don't know, but I know one thing. Uh, we we were together yesterday. Some of y'all, we we were, were we were together and, and had different places we had to be, be yesterday, and uh, at 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 four o'clock at my house it was 62 degrees yesterday at four o'clock it was 62 degrees we were out in the yard Marley was out in the yard we would you know whatever one hour one hour later it was 37 degrees one hour later it was 27 degrees I mean like I mean we've heard that the bottle can fall out in Texas well it absolutely did yesterday and uh, my goodness I I am just uh, that that's cold, too cold for me, too cold for me. I, when I talk about cold weather, because I know some of y'all don't like Pastor Sandy said uh, under seventy, but uh, you know, so cold weather to me is like forty to sixty-five, some number like that. That's cold weather. But uh, man, this is if I want this kind of weather, I'll go, I'll go where it's at, and, and have it for a couple of days and come home. Boy, this is what you come home to today. My goodness, my goodness. So thankful. There will not be any prayer meeting here in the service building tonight. I want you to stay home and safe and dry. They are expecting a little, uh, little precip coming in later this evening and in the morning, maybe a little freezing type. So be careful with all of that. And uh, we're just so honored uh, that you are all here today. And we welcome all of you. Patrick Scott's mentioned several of you uh, by name. Uh, Brother Martinez, it's good to have you 
home from Mexico, and uh, we bless you today so much. And Brother Bob, it's good to see you, and we're praying for Jenny to be completely well. And Sister Heather's home. She's been out taking care of family and doing things that need to be done, and so we're all, we missed her when she's gone, so glad to have, have her here today. Amen. And in the presence of the Lord, amen. And then we got to see Sister Rebecca. We'd already re, 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 we re, had already welcomed Brother Rick home, but... Uh, uh, I tell you one thing, when you've been overseas as, for, for as long as and all you that travel internationally know that jet lag can grab you when you get back. Every time I'm in, in that part of the country for a couple of weeks and come home, that first few days I can barely walk. And, uh, but anyway, we're glad to have you guys home safely. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Uh, no, the Bible said Paul, the apostle, said there are many voices. There, 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 there are many, many voices in the world. Many voices. Now, who but Javier and Ina can turn an ordinary traffic cone <laughs> into a megaphone for me today? But thank you guys so much. Amen. That there are there are many voices. That there, and everybody is trying to get your attention. And 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 the scripture said you need to be careful who you entertain, because if you entertain. The wrong thing, you're going to get their message. You can sit and you can be an unbeliever watching some type of TV thing, and if you sit there long enough, uh, an info commercial, uh, two hours into that, you're going, you know what? I think I might should try that. You know what I'm talking about? So, so everybody wants your attention. Scripture said there are many voices, many, many voices. And the word that the Lord has spoken to me today is, was born out of our Sunday night prayer meeting this last Sunday night. Sister Jeannie and I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But the Jewish New Year of 5784 began, of course, as you well know, uh, September the 15th, 2023. Uh, the Hebraic number, 4 is the Hebrew letter Dalet. Its pictograph picture is of a door. And you heard Pastor Scott talk about some doors that God has already opened. We just need to push them open. And I believe that with all of my heart. Amen. It is the he, the new Hebraic year of 5784 will be the year of the closing of a door and the opening of a new door. Hebrew scholars believe that 5784, which is our 2024, I love this, will be the year of the, everybody say voice. Voice. Voices. Everybody. Voices. The subject is voices. They believe that the year 5784 will be the voice of the doorkeeper. Now, we know who the doorkeeper is. We also know who the door is. Amen. Praise God. So, a new door in 2024 praise God can you say amen then last Sunday I preached from Genesis 8 we talked about the ark resting God remembered Noah and every living thing that was all the animals that were with him in the ark and God made a wind hear that to pass over the earth and the waters subsided Sunday night Sunday night we we got together and we prayed for wind the wind of God in the Sunday night prayer meeting. Probably, I don't know, 20 people, 25 people here. We prayed for wind. Monday morning, the physical wind started blowing. I'm telling you, there's shingles gone here, shingles gone there. Our, our whole neighborhood, everything's uprooted and uh, trash cans down the street, you know. And wind, 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 wind. And we got more wind coming. Uh, but the Bible said, as it is in the natural first and then in the spiritual. So I believe that wind, wind of God is coming. Amen. So in that new year, because the ark rested on the first day of the first month, a new year. Amen. God gave the ark, which was Noah's church, and the ark is a type of our church. Number one, a restored earth. That is restoration, revival, and renewal. A new covenant, which was, of course, the rainbow. And dry ground appeared from what had been covered 
by the flood. Children was born. That's a very significant point. Think about this. The ark, the, the church of that day, Noah and his family was in the ark for 370 days. Not one child was born. No children were born on the ark. Scripture tells us that. And there were not any animals born on the ark. Now, what happened during those periods of time when God had to actually alter nature for a while? Can you imagine, you know, the, telling the rabbit, it's only two, only two, you know, or the rats, only two, only two, you know. But, but there was no, but, but after the ark settled, there was children born. There was a great, great harvest, powerful worship was reestablished on the earth, and the ark rested, the Bible says. After the tossing and the turmoil and, 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 and everything that had went on, 370 days, they were literally 520 miles from where they started. The ark drifted from where Noah built it to Mount Ararat, 520 miles. So that where, where the ark came to rest, was a mighty, mighty long way from where it started. And God spoke to me that, about that. He said, the, America has gone a long, long way from where it started. You know it's true. I know it's true. Everything about life as you and I grew up to know, we've come a long way. Even the church has come a long way from where it ought to be. And God is, is saying again, I'm, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Not just the violence and all the things that happened, but all these five things that happened on this side of the ark, which includes the revival and the glory of God. But one of the things I want to highlight today is that he said, I'm going to bring rest and renewed strength, and there's going to be a fresh grace and a, 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 a great anointing that's going to come out of this rest. Out of this rest. So, sometimes, it feels like we can't see dry ground, doesn't it? We feel like we and the nation are drowning, drowning, rather, are drowning in a sea of evil, a sea of discouragement, need, and trouble. God is sending the wind to blow upon the floods, our floods, and dry ground will begin to appear. We're going to get our nation back. We're going to get the church back. We're going to get your family back. We're going to get our finances back. We're going to get our hopes and our dreams back. All the things that have been abandoned and forgotten, covered up by the flood. But it took the wind... The Bible said it took the wind of God because the Scripture said that God loosed the wind and the wind blew over the entire earth. It took the wind of God in Noah's day. It will also take the wind of God in our day to bring this renewal, to bring this revival. God sent wind over all of the earth. Sunday night we prayed for wind. And I released this word that was a prophetic word given to Pastor Carolyn and I on May the 10th, 2022. Uh, Sister Ann Altry is here today, and the Lord spoke this word. She typed it up. I've had it ever since. We brought it out when, uh, uh, Sunday night. Here's the word of the Lord given May 10th, 2022. Get ready, the Lord said, to hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind. For I will blow up on the earth with a force greater in volume than any natural wind could ever produce. I will breathe upon the earth the breath of God again. Not just in one place as it was at Pentecost, but in many different locations all at the same time. And when the breath of my spirit touches those who are crying out to me to send the fire of the Spirit again. It will ignite 
the fire upon the altar again and revival will begin. Get ready to receive the power of my anointing as the fire falls from heaven again. I will destroy the enemies of the church just as I destroy the enemies of my people. They will not stand in the way of what I am about to reveal to all who seek after me. Watch and pray. Be ready to enter into the glorious presence of the Lord that will abide on this earth until I take you away and you be caught up in the clouds of glory to be with me forever, saith the Lord. That word was given on May 10th, 2022, and now God is saying, I'm about to send a wind that's going to push back the flood. Remember what God's word said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Now, I want to address today all the voices. But I want to address today the voice. Because we have reached a point where the Bible said, Let him who hath an ear hear. Prophetically and scripturally and even dispensationally, the church right now has reached a place where God is going to speak to his body in a particular way. And he said, let him who hath ears to hear in that day hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. This amazing word, this unique word, this, 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 this dynamic word that I'm about to release to you today, God gave it to me during our Sunday night prayer meeting. We were in the prayer meeting, and, and, and before we started, and Jeannie, was, our, our prayer pastor, was, was talking about the services that Sunday and the word. We had a message in tongues and interpretation of tongues at the conclusion of that service, and that's out there. You can see that as well. If you have not got to see that, it's powerful word of the Lord prophetically that came. And Jeannie began to give us the testimony, and I have her permission to share this part of it. She began to give us a testimony before we pray. She said, so a, a few years ago, said something came into my family that totally destroyed my entire family. We have lived with the pain of it ever since. It has brought the deepest kind of emotional stress that you can imagine we prayed over it we prayed about it I, I knew that in my heart I had to forgive the individual that 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 did this thing to us and she said I would pray God I'm, I'm trying to forgive and I want to forgive but 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 somehow how it would always end back up this painful part of your heart just it's there we all have see it may not be the same thing but we all have gone through some stuff we've got that's why this word is going to be so powerful because God said I'm going to I'm going to deal with the most painful thing you've ever had I'm going to deal with the most dramatic part of your past and your present that you can ever imagine and so she said I, I kept praying I kept praying God I, I, I'm, I'm and she said finally I reached a point she said, but I couldn't find the rest. I couldn't. She said, but this morning when, when, I, when I saw that ark, the pastor had it in his hands. And, of course, you know, I was, it, the ark was all over the place. And, and it, it wasn't upside down, of course. But it, was, it felt like it was going to be upside down. I'm sure to Noah and the church that was inside there. Because, you know, Noah, that was the church. The Bible said there were eight souls of the church saved in that day. That was the church. She said, but when pastor talked about and you remember I had the little holder that the ark set in, set in and, and it came to a rest. She said, I knew at that moment that this thing that I had tried to release that had created such turmoil in my heart that now my soul and my heart was at rest. And we rejoiced with her, and, and of course, and, and many of you, we, we know your story. Uh, certainly that part that you've shared with us, and 
the, the truth is that nobody knows all of our stories. We all have parts of our lives and parts of our stories that only God knows. And, and, and there are some things that, that you have suffered in silence with. You, you've never divulged that part and that painful area to anybody. And let alone to, uh, to your pastors or, or, or friends. And, and the Lord today has a, has a word. Because out there, the world will tell you how to do it. Get even. Give up. Forget it. Blame God. Get mad at God. Don't believe the word of God. Turn away from the truth. Just everything that the Antichrist spirit is spewing out of his mouth right now politically, uh, you know, uh, everything that he has got his hands on. And you got to remember that the Antichrist has got his hands on every method and a means of communication that's in the world. Because here's what the Bible said about the Antichrist. First of all, let me tell you about the enemy. The Bible said we're in, we're in, we're in Isaiah chapter 14. It's a powerful chapter, and I, I don't want to get there too much. But that is the first chapter that God absolutely describes the destruction of Lucifer. And the scripture says concerning the Lucifer's mouth that it was a musical instrument and that built into him was the, was the, the that when he, he was the glory of the morning, God himself called Lucifer the glory of the morning. He's every bird, songbird. He's, he's, he, he's just, he said, and then the Antichrist will be known for his voice. When you read Daniel, when you read uh, Ezekiel, when you read Jeremiah, book of Psalms, book of Revelation. The Bible tells us that the Antichrist will be such a powerful voice that people will marvel at his voice. Literally marvel. That's a strong word. That's more than amazed. That's more than wonderful. It will be a marvel. There's only a few marvels in the world that are considered to be a marvel. And one of the things that's going to happen in the future is there's coming an individual called the Antichrist that will have such a voice that the whole world will marvel after him. Marvel. And so right now, that boy, that's why the enemy wants every method of communication, every social media, everything that he possibly can communicate to the human race with, every megaphone that he can get today to get his message out. He's buying for our attention. And he really, wants to, he really wants ours. He's already got the world. What he's really aiming for is the church. He's aiming at you and I. He, he'd like to attack our, our abandoned hearts. He'd like to attack those painful areas where he can maybe find a way to sow some discord. And, and I, just, I just wanted to compliment Sister Jeannie because sometimes when you've been hurt, as deeply as that pain was, and you, some of you the same, it's hard to find that kind of rest. It's hard to find, but to be able to forgive, that is an incredible gift. Incredible gift. And the word that, that I want to give you today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, beginning at verse 19. And it is a dramatic word because... It came at an unexpected time. It, it, it came at a time when, when this is what Israel looked like. And God said, could I have everybody's attention, please? Could I have your attention, please? And then God says, even the most desolated parts of your abandoned land will soon be crowded with your people. Your enemies who enslaved you will be far, far away. The generations born in exile will return and say, we need more room. It's crowded in here. Then you will think to yourself. You're going to talk to yourself and say, who has given me all these children? For most of my children were destroyed and the rest were carried away into exile and I was left here 
all alone. Let me just stop right here. Let me just talk about loneliness. Single people and, 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 and single moms and single dads and single grandparents and, and those of you that live alone. There's not, loneliness is such a devastating battle for you. And, 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 and Pastor Carol and I pray over you every day. And, and you that are watching today, I just want you to know that but today that God not only wants to address those of us may have, who may have a broken heart, but God wants to address all of you who feel like you've been left all along. He, he pointed out, he said, I felt like I had been left all along. Who bore these children? Who raised them for me? And then I'm going to give you that answer in just a second. Here's the, my title is this. Attention, please. May I have your attention please because i believe that god has ushered us in to a season of thunder god in this text was speaking to a devastated country he was speaking to the remnant that's a good word remnant it is a direct word to whomever and whatever was left after the invasions, after the loss of families, think about it, after the destruction of the temple, after the ruined economy, it was an unusual word given at an unusual time. Because God has promised, Brother Leif, that he is going to thunder from heaven and there is no doubt that we have moved into what I felt the Holy Ghost whisper in my ear Sunday night a season of thunder a season God, God said this is this is gonna last a while this is not gonna be just a few this is not a, a Sunday evening thunder thunderstorm that rumbles by like they do here in Texas for an hour this is not gonna be a week of it there's gonna be a season coming of my thunder <laughs> God said right now I've got the megaphone I'm about to shut down I'm about to stop the voice he said every word that comes against you in judgment I'm gonna condemn it I'm gonna shut down the enemy's time I'm gonna shut down the work I'm gonna shut down the mouth of the enemy I'm gonna close the mouth of your lions hallelujah I'm gonna open the doors miraculously in your life may I have your attention please God says I've got an announcement to make and that announcement is this, that most desolate, broken part of your heart. And I want to just stay here just for a moment because there's something in the Holy Ghost right now. When I was standing down here in worship today, what a powerful time of worship. We could have just done that all day long. Just, Brother Rusty, we could have just stayed right there. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, I want to, I want to talk about the desolate land. I want, to, I want to talk about the hearts like that Jeannie Bulan and family that's cared. I, I want to talk to you about your desolation, those, those things that have happened in your life, maybe still happening. Maybe those of you that have had to suffer afflictions in your physical body that nobody knows anything about, but just you and God. Maybe, maybe things that you've had to go through that would, would have been embarrassing to you if anybody else knew. Maybe, maybe areas where, where you have not known how to emotionally deal with it. You certainly have not known how to medically to deal with it. And every seemed like everything the doctors would say and do and sending you from doctor to doctor, nobody could find the answer. God, God that, that's, who, that's whose hearts and lives I want to talk to today. That, that, that's why I've got my mega horn out. That's why I want you to listen. I want you to, I want you to turn off out there, and I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Can you say amen? So he said those, those destructive abandoned lands, things that you've forgotten on, things that you've given up on, are areas that I'm going to. 
This is what he said to me. I just I wrote this down. I don't know if I got that on the slide or not, but I, I wrote it down. God said, We will notice. We will notice restoration first in places and areas of our lives, uh, in the areas of the church and our nation, and even the world that have been the most lacking, the most painful, the most needful, the most, most desolate. He said, you're, you're going to know when restoration starts because it's going to start with Jeannie's heart. It's going to start with my heart. It's going to start with... It's going to start with things in my own physical body that I don't even know how to describe. Things in your body that's going on that you don't know how to get rid of and deal with. And the doctors don't know how to find it. And, and the medicine's not working. And, and uh, you all know about all the mules, those donkeys. I've had to ride, I call those prescriptions donkeys. And those, those mules, that you have to ride. Sometimes you get to your miracle. But, but, you know, after a while they just keep throwing medicine at you, keep throwing medicine at you, and none of it works. And God said, that, that's what I want to talk to you about. I, I want to talk to you about those places. I want to talk to you about those things in your own body, those things in your own mind, in your own life. We're going to talk about the nation. We're going to talk about the revival. But it, God said, I want to deal with those desolate places. I want to deal with those, the most painful areas uh, emotionally of your life, where you've come from, what you've gone through, what you may be faced with right now. And, and, and the need that you may be faced with, and even the finances and, and everything that's going on. I want you to know that God is saying, we have moved into a season of my thunder. You're going to hear from me. The thunder is going to be a season of thunder. Amen. And, and, and then there was, he said, you're going to have a, when all this starts happening, you start hearing this, he said, you're going to start talking to yourself. You know, you ever talk to yourself? Yeah, my, 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 one of my Bible, one of my college professors said, you know, it's okay to talk to yourself. It's when you answer yourself, you need to get worried you don't, when you start answering yourself. But, but, but here, God said, when all this starts happening, you're going to start saying, whoo, where did this, how, how did this happen? Wow, whoo, where, where did this come from? Can you imagine can you imagine Abraham and Sarah? Can, can, come on. Can you imagine? How, how did this happen? Can, can you imagine? Amen. Can you imagine Elizabeth? Can you, can you imagine Paul and Silas in jail? Where, where did all this happen? I'm just telling you, God said, I'm about to move in ways that's going to make you, the church, question how in the world can this be? Where did all these kids? I didn't have all these kids. Where did they come from? God said, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Hallelujah. It's harvest time. Ha. Because, because you're going to have to have a conversation with restoration. Because restoration has the voice. Harvest has the voice. Revival has the voice. And all the voices are saying, attention, please. You're going to need some more room in here. Even the most desolate parts of your abandoned land will soon be crowded with your people and your enemies who enslaved you will be far from you. What has bound us will be removed from our life. God said there is an increase of people, harvest, that is going to populate even the area that you've given up on are abandoned. And when that generation born in exile, that could our families, your kids, your grandkids born out there are just the people who grew up without God completely, born in exile. That will even, listen, part of the harvest that's going to be coming to the church, they, they don't know anything about God, they know anything about the Bible. Come on, they don't know anything about church. They didn't, they weren't, they didn't grow up in church like a lot of us. They, they, won't, they won't have the background that we have. They're, they're going to be born in exile, and yet God said they're going to be so changed by my restorating, restoration power that they're going to come in and start saying, you know, it looks full to us. There's like enough for us. They're going to say, this, those born in exile are going to say, we need some more room in here. It's crowded in here. It's crowded in here. Amen. And he said, you're going to start talking to yourself going, where in the world? How did this happen? How did this, how did this take place? Yesterday when I got up, I couldn't even walk. Last week, I, the, 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 this morning I got up, and this had changed. Tomorrow, I'm just telling you, God is about to deal with the most desolate painful 
lacking areas of our life. Everybody take your wallet out or your purse or your billfold, checkbook to be good, credit card, whatever you got. The reason I got this out because of all the things in our life, this probably has the loudest mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, oh, me too. Oh, yeah. If you don't think this won't talk to you, especially when you open it up and huh, it's, it's pretty much empty on that, you know, See this? I got a, I got one that's got a, it's got a divider in it. The front part I keep all the, you know you know there's insurance cards and medic Medicare. Can y'all Medicare? I I never dreamed I'd ever be on Medicare. Medi there's a Medicare card. All right there's there's my preacher's license and there's there's my insurance. All that so that first part's plenty full. It's that second part behind there you know, that, that talks to you a lot. Saying, you know, it's not very crowded in here right now. You're talking about being crowded, but it's not crowded in here. Or you look at your checkbook account and you go, well, you know, don't look very crowded here either. I want you to know, the reason I had you had this out in your hand because we need to talk to our wallet, our finances. We need to talk to our situation. You need to talk to your body. You need to talk to that part. You need to talk to that place, that thing. You know what it is, that broken. You need to, you need to say, you know what? You've been listening to, to the wrong crowd. You've been listening to the wrong stuff. It's about time that you hear the word of the Lord. I, I gotta, I, I'm saying to my wallet and my finances, could I have your attention, please? God has a word for you. God's got a word for the finances. God's got a word for you that are in business. God has got a word for you who are entrepreneurs. Amen. God has a word for you. Amen. On a fixed income. I'm going to just tell you. God gave me this word in the 830 service. God said in the 830 service, I just came out. God said to you on a fixed income. Maybe you that are, are, are having to live off a retirement income. And it's not enough. Because sometimes, as you age, sometimes your prescriptions are more than you make. We, we've, we've had to help, we've, we've had to deal with situations where people had to choose whether they ate or, or got their medicine. And, we've, and this church has come alongside people like that before. And, 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 and I'm just telling you that God wants to speak to us. And I, I felt the Holy Ghost said, I am say to the people on fixed income, that I am about to bring increase from unexpected resources, and they're going to say, how in the world, where did this come from? How did, where did, how did this end? I'm just telling you, get ready, praise God. Get, I, I want to speak to every survivor of pain. All of you may have survived some kind of, some kind of sexual uh, molestation, pain, affliction, tragedies. In the past, I want to speak to you, have been enslaved in your marriage, in the bondage of the loneliness. Amen. Take the photos, go home, get the photos of your family, and start prophesying over them. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you something. Get your voice back. God wants to, listen, we've got, the church has been silent far too long. We've lost our voice. I'm telling you what, the reason that, come on, the reason the nation is so, so, so far away is because the church has lost their voice. Amen. There is no morality preached anymore. There is no, amen, godliness preached anymore. We look like the world. We act like the world. We talk like the world. We go to the same places. We act like the world. And if you make us mad enough, we'll cuss you like the world. Pastor Curtin and I have done this long enough, pastored long enough. We, we've been through, enough. listen, there have been a few times when people have walked out, Christian people have walked out of our offices and the last words we heard as they went out was profanity. Strings of profanity hurled our way, cursing us, calling us the most profane, ungodly thing that you could ever imagine hearing coming out of the mouth of a Christian. See, that's what the devil wants us to do. But I got news today. <laughs> We're in a season of thunder. And God wants you to get your megaphone back. He wants you to speak up and be heard. 
Hallelujah, in the land of the living. Praise God. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Finally, God said, you're going you're gonna to talk to yourself, and you're going to wonder, where in the world is all this coming from? Hallelujah. Because most of my children, you, I read it, but God is raising his voice, and he is saying, harvest, 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 and here it is. Isaiah 54, 1 and 2. Sing, O childless woman. Break forth into loud, joyful songs, O Jerusalem. Even though you never gave birth for, to a child, for the woman who could bear no children now has more children than all the other women, saith the Lord. He said, listen, that barren womb of the church, that barren womb of life, that barren area of finances, you couldn't produce, you tried, you couldn't, you went, you got all, you, you did this, you did the other. It just never seemed to produce. God said, I'm about to release this thing. Hallelujah. And when it's all over, the childless, the childless women will break forth and the joyful singing because they who could bear no children that's for, for you physically and spiritually now has more than all the other women saith the Lord enlarge your house build an addition spread out your home hallelujah could I have your attention please could I have your attention, please. As, the, as Pastor Carol and the praise team come and you stand today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for the wind that you prophesied in the Word and you prophesied through prophets. And you've given us the prophetic word, amen, through prophecy, that a wind was coming, a spiritual wind was coming to this world that has never, like the world, has never seen. Lord, you are saying today, attention please. May I have, world, may I have your attention, please. Hallelujah. Lord, touch our hearts today. The brokenness, the pain. There's not a person in this house or a person watching under the sound of my voice that does not have a desolate part of their life. Maybe an area that you don't even have any hope for anymore. Maybe you've given up on your healing. Maybe you've given up on your future. Maybe you've given up on your dream. Maybe you've given up on your family ever being saved. Maybe you've given up on there ever being a revival in America. Maybe you've even given up on America. Maybe you even have given up on God. And it's okay. Because God is just simply saying to us today, I know where you are and I know who you are and I know what you need. And so while some days I speak to everybody today I'm just speaking to you I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking to the most desolate parts of what was abandoned land and I'm saying to you today your land your life will soon be crowded with increase and the enemies who have enslaved you will be far, far away, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Everybody that can, if you're unable to come to the front, please stay where you are. But if you're able to come to the front, let's just all come and stand around the altar today. The Lord is speaking to us and saying, I want your attention, please. Let's sing it. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are here. You're moving in our midst. Hallelujah. I worship. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Hallelujah. You are here. You're working. working in this working. place. I worship you, Lord, I, I worship you. you. Hallelujah. Come on now. You are, here. you are here, Lord. You're moving in our midst. Hallelujah. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, Hallelujah. Lord. You're working in this place. Thank God. Thank God. I worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, I worship you. Thank God. Here it is. You are the way made miracle work. On the skin, light in the darkness. My God. God. That is who you are. Hallelujah. Way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. God. That, that is, is who you are, Lord. You are here. Hallelujah. Touching every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Hallelujah, Father. You are here. Healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Ladies, sing this to the Lord. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Yes. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Oh. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. No, no, you never no. stop. You never stop. Stop, you never stop working, you never stop, 
close with this. Think about it for just a second. 5,000 men plus women and children were fed in a desert place. Everybody knew there was no food. They'd all traveled together for several days. Now, according to theologians, probably up to 15,000 people have been eating all they can eat. And finally, somebody in the crowd asked the question, where in the world did all of this food come from? And Andrew went and found this little boy and said, he brought it all. Because Jesus can take what you bring and make it into what you need. He'll, he'll take what you, what you bring and multiply it into what you need. So what the disciples were saying, this child left home and brought with him enough food to feed 15,000 people. He just didn't know it when he left. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, God is telling us right now, hear me, hear me, hear me. There, God is going to multiply some things in your life and you're going to say the same thing that they said. How did this happen? Where did it come from? Who raised these kids? Who, who brought this? Who? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Could I have your attention, please? Pastor Scott. And amen. What a great word today. Amen. Let's take that, hide it in our heart this week, and begin to just start uh, lifting that back up to the Lord this week. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. What a great word Amen. today. Amen. Amen. Let's just bow our heads this morning. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for this word today, Lord. 
We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this time and this season, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, for harvest, Lord. And Father, we, we thank you, Father, for every promise that you said in your word concerning us. Every promise is yea and amen. And Lord, we just thank you for that today, Lord. We just speak blessings over each and every one that is here today to lead them and guide them and bring us all back at the appointed time, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, hello, everybody. This is Pastor Glenn Davis. And on behalf, amen, of Brother James Beavers, one of our ministers here at Abundant Life Church and part of our staff, we want to say welcome to Abundant Life Church. And we want to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching our telecast today. I pray that the Word of God was a blessing to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit touched your heart through the praise and worship by God's people. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord, Brother James, yes, when Amen. it comes down. I know you can enjoy these services online and, and uh, uh, on, on camera, but there's nothing like being in the actual mm -hmm atmosphere of where the presence of God is so yes, real yes, and such yes, a blessing. Yes. Amen. So we want to invite you next week to be with us, uh, 839, 30, and 1030, Brother James. Yes, we have yes. such a great time. And uh, then, of course, remember, every week we'll be here. And uh, there's a number on the screen that you can call. We'll be happy to pray over you, over your prayer request, and share your praise reports. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So today, on behalf of Patrick Scott and Patrick Sandy Taylor, Patrick Carroll and myself, Brother James Beavers, yes, and all of our wonderful staff here at Abundant Life Church, be blessed. We love you.